All right, and this is just going to be a companion piece to the Magic Finding Guide and the uh, Magic Find Chieftain Auto Bomber Guide that I made recently. And I'm just going to do a walkthrough of a map, kind of show how it goes in real time. I did make one very, very small change to my build, uh, truly tiny. I just upgraded my Venter Scamble from this OK one that I got lucky on a three to one vendor reroll. And I bought this one that has a bit more rarity and a really nice fire res roll. That's pretty much all that happened there. So now we just kind of run through all of our normal check down. I do have a map in there. I noticed that my sextants aren't on. I was playing on another character earlier. And this is a little tip. If you are playing on a character, you've got some sextants that you've got rolled out and you don't want to like uh, mess them up by playing an alt or something. You can pull them off with compasses. That can be a little annoying. You can also just control click your sextants or uh, you know, your void stones and it'll throw them over here in the little void stone holder. So you can mess around and, and not uh, screw up any of your sextants or anything. All right, so with that being done, let's just go ahead and jump into this map and just kind of see how it goes. I'm hoping that it goes well. <laughs> that would be nice, but eh, you know, who can say RNG, right? So the first thing we're going to do once we've finally loaded in is hit that mirror and walk on over to the Wildwood and jump in before we can kill anything, because we do want to get this Wildwood juice going first. All right, so I see the Wisp Trail and I immediately start going that way. See some guys in that direction as well. That seems all good. And I'm just trying to triangulate exactly where I am in the Wildwood. And we got the Beyond event. Uh, that one's OK. We can tap that White Wisp while we're waiting for uh, a big Beyond boss to spawn. Hopefully we can chain a nice Ignite into the Beyond boss. Not my favorite event by any stretch. Looks like we might not actually carry a big event or a big Ignite into this guy. Yeah, that kind of sucks. All right, let's just leave and try and see if there's some more Wisps around in this area leading us somewhere else. Okay, that's something. Hey, okay, I think we got ourselves a good ignite here. We can go back and give this guy a kiss. No, not yet. There we go. All right. Normally, I would hope to find, like, just from the first event where I was in the Wildwood. Doesn't really seem like I have yet, though. It This could be any of them, really. I don't think it's the right one. I think we might have some with... Nope, kind of a dead end heading to the northeast. Let's just all right. Well, we're hitting a wall over here, so I think that's probably a dead end that way. So I'm getting a feeling that we're probably on the left side or the bottom maybe of the Wildwood. So I'm just going to check back where we started, see if there's an alternate direction we could go from here. Uh, yeah. Oh, great. A vendor. Love that. OK, so this is east of where we were before. I do always like to check the primalist vendor and just make sure there's nothing of value here. That's not anything of value. Uh, that's not useful. OK, great. So I think we're on the east side here. I think that one before was the south end. So we're just going to try and get these guys to come flying out of the woods here and then keep going uh, northwest looking for the northern event. And hopefully we don't run out of exploration. Boy, this is a bad one. That's OK. All right. Well, we'll clean up what we have here and, you know, maybe we'll get lucky on Eldritch altars or something. But generally speaking, this is this is in the range where you could justify just not even doing the map entirely. Right around 3K, that's like the bare minimum and it's purple and blue, so really not not the best color combination by any stretch. Not the end of the world to run this, but yeah, definitely peeking around down to the south here when there was nothing that probably cost me getting to the third event. Kind of a bummer. Definitely peeking over there did. OK, let's go ahead and jump. Uh, actually, there's quite a few more wisps over here. That's 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 a bit better. See if we get anything out of the cairn. No, not really. Yeah. 
Okay, that's over, well, over 3K anyway. It's almost 3,500, but not quite. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's fine. For, you know, first shot, I'll just take that. And now it's just time to clear out the map. Going to clear all the way from here to the end. You know, the positive of a kind of crappy low juice map like this. Not that this is terrible, but you know, relatively low juice is that it is quicker to clear. So not the end of the world to get a just sort of average map like this. Probably not going to be any too, uh, like, too many gorgeous loot explosions so along the way. Did Einhard get that guy? Yeah, he did. Okay, great. And I just kind of want to clear out all the side areas along the way. Try not to leave any uh, big gaps behind. Because there might be an Eldritch Altar just waiting to be spawned there. And, you know, don't want to miss those and then start clearing stuff and then find a nice Eldritch Altar halfway through clearing out. Don't want to have to run all the way from the end of the map back to this either. Okay. I do love Einhar. As a voice actor, anyway. Alright, just more clearing stuff out. I usually will just clobber all the Harbingers on the way to the end of the map. I, I don't really feel like I need to wait until I've gotten all the, uh, all the Eldritch Altars activated before I deal with the Harbingers. It's really just the Abysses and the Rituals that I like to wait on. Uh, getting every Eldritch Altar I can. And then Ultimatum. Ooh, that's a that's a lame one to get spawned in here. Terrible Eldritch Altars thus far. Div card and map. That could be better. Plenty of stuff blowing up, though. Hey, there we go. A nice quantum rarity altar. That's what we like to see. All right, we've done a pretty good job clearing the map out thus far. Just want to make sure I don't tag any of these abysses prematurely. Got four down here in this part of the valley. We might only have four in this map. Maybe the maybe the ultimatum pushed one of them out. Nope, there's a fifth. OK, we're good. Yeah, OK, that's not so bad. Getting a lot of bubblegum currency. Nothing wrong with that. Another quant shrine. That's great. All right, this is coming together. OK. After a bit of a whatever start. Die already. Okay, great. I think we've got ourselves an ignite resistant rare or something. I guess not. It's dead. Okay, we're under 50 mobs left. Checking in the top right corner here. And I feel like I've gotten all the Eldritch Altars I'm going to get. You know, I got two Quant ones. So that's not too bad. So I'm just going to pop the first... Uh, first Abyss, clean up this Harbinger while I'm waiting it, uh, for it to move around. And then this is really like the main thing that I think is worth showing off and is somewhat interesting. Something that took me a little while to actually learn in doing this strategy was like how to handle the Abysses. And so like as you're dealing with the Abysses, when they're just moving around and spawning guys, it's pretty much like you would expect, right? You just follow after them, kill everything very straightforward behavior. It's really only once it spawns a Stygian Spire at the end of its movement that there is like some weird behavior that you have to No, And I think did it move on or did it spawn a Spire or did it die? I can't even tell. No, it moved on. I missed it moving on somehow. OK, great. 
that is the main thing I like to watch out for while I'm doing this. And that's one of the very nice things about being so tanky is you can kind of just focus on the green circle. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm just watching that green circle for the most part. Sometimes I'll get a little distracted picking stuff up. Really want to be careful. OK, so if that green circle despawns, that means it is turning into a Stygian Spire. It'll despawn and then reappear. And you can see more green circles spawning where it is launching out projectiles that spawn dudes. And so what we want to do is we just want to give it its personal space. I think we yeah, we got a chain there. Ultimately, I was a little too close. Blew it up. Not all that rewarding. On that first one, I'm going to clean this up real quick. Usually I clean the floor up as I go. It's just kind of the way I prefer to do it. Big advantage of playing a super tanky build as opposed to toxic. Uh, well, not toxic rain tornado shot, but I guess toxic rain math uh, magic find as well. Like you might be more interested in those just sort of um, killing everything along the way. And then going back and cleaning up later. All right, this is the south one, so I'm just going to kind of give a wide berth to that other deactivated one or not yet activated one. All right, that's our first uh, first pit, second pit here. I think. And really just watching for it to like despawn, because as soon as it despawns on the minimap, whether you're doing full screen minimap or up in the top corner as soon as it despawns that's when it is turning into a stygian spire and that's when you want to get some distance i think another thing about getting really good juice on your maps yep there it goes is it makes the stygian spire be a lot tankier so it's a lot less likely for you to blow it up okay here we've gotten an example of something i wanted to or did mention in the previous video i'm glad that happened it kind of bugged out a bit and it needed me to walk over and like do a little bit of damage to tap it and make it wake up. I'm actually going to give it just a little bit more space. I want those guys to die. Not on the spire. Come on, fellas. Another weird bug I've run into only a handful of times is sometimes if they're super, super juiced and you have like a modifier on the map, like enemies get a percentage of life as energy shield. Sometimes you actually need to specifically go stand on them and do damage to them to get them to start spawning guys. Uh, yeah, I blew a guy up on it. That's OK. All right, abyss number three coming up. Time to just chase it around for a bit. Oh, it is already turned into a spire. OK, great. Now we just wait for these guys to spawn and uh, come eat me. And here they come. I really hate these guys. I love this build for dealing with these abyss mobs. But man, I really hate these guys that like go stealth and immune all the way over to you and then only only become attackable or visible or whatever as soon as they are throwing a punch at you. Very annoying mob design. So having a build that can just like passively clear them is uh, very satisfying to play. And also just like it feels like vengeance on these irritating mobs. They're very cheap. They're cheaters. So it's nice to be able to cheat back by just uh, never dying and passively radiating out, you know, full health pools worth of damage into them. Hey, there we go. Shame I didn't have uh, any yellow juice on the map. That might have been a bigger explosion, but that's still pretty decent. That kind of makes up for, I think, the rest of the map. Certainly it makes this map profitable, even with the absolutely abysmal wisp juice that we've had thus far. Not that I wouldn't have been happier for the one that I'm recording to be like 20 divines instead of two. I can live with it. Oh, I screwed that one up. If we can at least get one set of guys. Nah, 
Yeah, okay, I botched that one. Jeez. Bummer. Alright, I'll be more careful on this last one. Hopefully I'll get lucky. Got to get away from that Stygian Spire. Okay, it has cooled down a bit. Go ahead and throw some rares at me if you don't mind, please. Hey, there we go. All right. Now we're talking. That's not too bad. And actually, I'm glad that we got a Cassia in here as well, because this is uh, to spoil a future video. This is something I've been playing around with and really enjoying. I'm just going to throw a couple of cold towers out here. But check this out. All right, there we go. That takes care of that lane for a while. And this takes care of this lane. And yeah, as it turns out, this build, I guess it's not really that surprising that a corpse exploding type build would dominate in Blight, but it really does. It's quite good. I've been playing around with doing Blighted maps and just doing Blight as a strategy with this build. And I've been very impressed, very pleased with the results so far. Now we just have to wait for them to finish spawning and dying. All right, that's one lane done. I think we're just about done here. Okay, Let's see if we got anything of value. Not likely in a non-juiced blight, but you never know. Okay, then. <laughs> All right, and finally, I do feel like with this being a low juice map, I'm going to step into the boss's room and at least clear out the magic and rare mobs that are in there. And then, you know, if the boss, if I'm able to carry a nice ignite into the boss, if she'll spawn quickly enough, then that would be great. And if she doesn't, then I'll just pour it out and that'll be that. And, you know, not the most productive map ever by any stretch. Three divines. Definitely can do better than that. Oh, she's actually going down pretty quick. Yeah, I'll take that. But I mean, ultimately, what, am I going to complain about getting three divines in a map that I'm saying is not that great? No, I, it's pretty decent. Especially considering that, like, the sky is the limit compared to this. I do feel bad about botching that one spire, though. I was definitely distracting myself thinking about corpse explosions or uh, currency conversions. Yeah, OK, one chaos for killing the boss, kind of a good object lesson that it's usually not worth killing the boss unless you get a really, really juicy explosion onto her. But I was just hoping, hey, you know, maybe we get something nice. Not this time. All right, and that's pretty much a map. That's basically it. Uh, you know, my ideal farm strategy would basically just be to, as soon as I'd finish that one, go dunk everything in to my stash here. Maybe throw this. This is, what is it? A eight socket I-83 fire damage cluster. Just throw that in a 50 tab and then just jump into another one. Usually I will keep and I didn't pull out four maps earlier because I was prepping to just immediately jump into just one. But normally I would keep four maps in my bag at a time. So, or at least each set of four, I'll do, I'll throw on my sextants. They're worth four maps, pull out four maps at a time, throw in the scarabs, and then I would just jump right into another one. That's pretty much how it goes. All right, thanks for the watching and hopefully this was helpful. Bye.